Contains of calcium. The cuticle contains chitin. Chitin is a major component. Then some added mineral salts. You have the calcium phosphate and the calcium carbonate. Then another thing that happens with the animals with exoskeleton is that they undergo what we call edisis or molting. Molting is a periodic shedding of the cuticle of arthropods for growth to occur. You discover that they shed their external surface. I said they have the skeleton being external to them. So they shed this off. And when that is done, growth will occur. Another one will, will come there. So they are, they are growing, increasing in size. In size. Then this molting or the air disease is controlled by an hormone called air disease. Air disease is the molting hormone. It's the one that controls molting or air disease in exoskeletons or animals that have exoskeleton. Then now to the endoskeleton. That is the endoskeleton is the skeleton that occur inside the animal body, such as we find in fishes, in toads, in frogs in birds and vertebrates generally you find endoskeleton in them for instance i know you've eaten fish before you discover that when you eat fish you eat the flesh outside then you find out that the bone is inside the fish so that is the skeleton of the fish that's what gives it the shape and makes it to stand firm then the endoskeleton comprises of vertebral colon the pectoral and the pelvic gadus the ribs and the limbs, the ribs and the limbs. So the structure, for instance, in the vertebrae, what makes the animal to stand firm, that is internal to the body of the animal, is what we call the endoskeleton, and it is made up of cartilage and bone in vertebrates. Bones and cartilage is what makes up the endoskeleton in vertebrates. Then I was talking about other types of endoskeleton. We have the hydrostatic skeleton. The hydrostatic skeleton is found in soft body invertebrates, such as the earthworm, the animal, and the echinoderms. We talked about the echinoderms. Then the this hydrostatic skeleton is not a hard skeleton, but is a fluid that is under pressure. Skeleton is not necessarily bone or a hard structure that you can that you can relate with now but what the basic definition about skeleton is that it helps the animal now to stay in shape and it gives it its shape and the structure so you find in an earthworm this fluid that i'm talking about that helps the earthworm to be in shape that's the hydrostatic skeleton is liquid that's why you have the hydro so, and it is surrounded by muscles that contract against it to maintain the shape and the form of the animal. Because if there is nothing like that, the animal will be shapeless and will not have, will not be structured in the physical look now. So, the in earthworm, in animal and the echinoderms, you find hydrostatic skeleton. It is not a hard skeleton, like bone or cartilage, no. It is a liquid that is under pressure, with which the, which is surrounded by muscles that contract against it to maintain the shape and the form of the animal. Then I was talking about the function of the endoskeleton. Number one function is that it gives the body its rigid framework. That's what I've been mentioning since that it helps the body to to be rigid. Then to which the soft part can be fasting. You know, the body is not just hard and it's not just soft. So for the so if there is no structure or the skeleton, the body of an animal will just fall to the ground because there will be nothing to hold it. So it is the endoskeleton that holds the body of the animal in place. Another thing that the endoskeleton does is that it enables movement. That's what the body stands on. If there is no structure inside your leg, you will not be able to move. So it is the and the skeleton that enables movement in the animal. Then also, it provides firm area for attachment of the tendons for the, of the muscles. Firm areas for attachment of the tendons of the muscle. That's what the endoskeleton does. It makes 
the attachments, the areas to be firm where the tendons of the muscle is attached. Like I earlier said, the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage and bones. So I will be talking about the cartilage, what they look like, and the bones, what they look like. The cartilage is firm but flexible tissue that make up the entire skeleton of cartilaginous species. The cartilage is not bone, but it is strong. It's a firm and flexible tissue. It can be bent. For instance, your hair is made up of cartilage. It's not bone. Can you see? You can bend it. You can twist it. You cannot twist your bone like that. So the cartilage is a firm but flexible tissue that make up the entire body of cartilaginous species, such as the dogfish, the race, the shark. The, those fishes are mentioned now, they are made up of cartilage, majorly. Then, the cartilage consists of cells embedded in hard organic matrix, known as a chondrin, which consists of the chondro chondroblast. The chondroblast is a group of spherical living cells. The cells are embedded in this hard organic matrix called chondrin, and the chondrin is made up of chondroblast. Also, you find cartilage in fetus, but it's temporary, before the bone is formed. That is when you find cartilage in fetus, that is the, the young one that, you, that is in the womb, that's not yet born, that's what is called fetus. So, it is first of all made up of cartilage, before it now develops, develops the bones. So, that's another place you can find cartilage. Then it is softer than bone, I've mentioned that earlier, and prevents bones from being worn out by movement over each other. Sometimes you find it over the bone, you know, by the time you are moving bone, you know, these are two bones, two major bones now, the one here and the upper, upper arm. By the time you are moving it, there is something else that's at the joint that is making it to move or else the bones will be eating each other and it, may, it will cause it to worn out on time. So that's another function of the cartilage. We have three types of cartilage. We have the hyaline cartilage, the fibro cartilage, and the elastic cartilage. Three types of cartilage. Don't forget the hyaline, the fibro, and the elastic cartilage. The hyaline cartilage is the simplest, and it consists of chondrin and chondroblast. I will explain what chondrin and chondroblast is. Then the hyaline cartilage lacks elastic or collagen fibers. They don't have elastic or collagen fibers. It's the simplest. Then it is found in the wall of trachea and bronchi forming rings, which support them and keep them open. When you look at the structure of the respiratory system, the trachea and the bronchi, you will find out that you find rings there. So it is this hyaline cartilage that is found there and it supports the trachea and the bronchi and keep them open. You know, it's, it's an opening. So, it's the hyaline cartilage that is found there. So, you can give an example of where you find hyaline cartilage. Then, it covers the surface of movable joints. Every joint that is movable. You know, there are some joints that don't move. They are just there. So, the hyaline cartilage, I said, is the simplest. It is found in the wall of the trachea and the bronchi. Then, it also covers the surface of movable joints. It supports the tip of the nose. You also find it there at the tip of your nose. You can touch it and you discover that it is not all bone, even though there is bone in your nose. But you have another structure that makes the nose firm, which is not the bone. That is what we call the hyaline cartilage. Now, the fibro cartilage, it is more rigid. Like I said, that the hyaline cartilage is the simplest. The fibro cartilage is more rigid. Then it's found at joints. And is found between vertebral disc for the cushioning effects of friction. You know, when bones begin to go over each other, they begin to ease each other and worn out easily. So this fibro cartilage also cushions the effect, that is, it minimizes the effect of friction. It is found at the ribs joining the breastbone. You find it, the fibro cartilage, at the ribs joining the breastbone or what we call the sternum. The third type, kind of cartilage is the elastic cartilage. From its name, you discover that it's made up of elastic fiber and it enhances flexibility. 
it is present in the epiglottis and the pinna. That is the external ear. You know, when I was describing the cartilage for the last name, I said you find it in the hair. And so the kind of cartilage that is found in the hair is called the elastic cartilage. You see, you can draw it, you can twist it. That's the form. That's what makes it so. The elasticity or the elastic fiber that is made up of is what makes it like that. Then oxygen and food slowly diffuses through the cartilage from nearby tissue so that there is no need for blood vessels. You know, when oxygen is produced in the body, it has to be transported around water. Everything that is manufactured in your body has to be transported around so that every cell gets their own portion for their metabolic activities. So, this cartilage is a means of diffusion for oxygen and food to nearby tissues so that you don't need uh, blood vessels. It's not everywhere that the, the blood vessels are. So they are standing as they are standing in gap for the blood vessels now. The elastic cartilage, they perform a role similar to the blood vessels. Not in every way, but where they are located. They diffuse oxygen and blood slowly, slowly now, through this cartilage. This cartilage diffuses oxygen and food slowly to nearby tissues that the room be near for the blood vessels, the arteries and the veins or capillaries. You don't need them where you have the elastic cartilage. I said the endoskeleton is made up of bones and cartilage and I've talked about the Cartilage. We have three types: the hyaline, the fibro cartilage, and the elastic cartilage. Now we move on to talk about the bones. Bone is the hardest tissue of which the skeleton of vertebrates is made up of. You know, bone is very strong. Even if you get the bone of a cow, for instance.